Hello, welcome everyone. Welcome. Good morning, everyone. We will get started in just a minute as we let people filter in. Happy Saturday. So excited to see so many people with us on a Saturday morning. I know that's a lot to ask. Awesome. All right. Well, good morning. Welcome to day two of the 2023 Conference of the National Association for Media Literacy Education. I am Danelle Probst, namely Deputy Director. Yesterday, we embarked on a day-long journey of professional learning and a celebration of youth voice in media. For our staff and volunteers, the conference sessions were a time of putting faces to the names that we've been communicating with over email, rekindling old connections, and meeting the new members of our community. Each year during this conference, we are reminded that together as a community, we are greater than the sum of our parts. As we navigate the second day of this conference, let us remember the power of collaboration and continue to foster an environment that values diverse perspectives, promotes critical thinking, and empowers the next generation to become informed media consumers and creators. I have a few quick reminders before we begin this morning's keynote. For those of you who are joining us for the first time today, please note that you will recognize the conference staff by our fancy blue t-shirts. Our amazing team has worked tirelessly to build this experience and is happy to help in any way we can during or after the conference. Please do not hesitate to reach out in session chat, by email, or just say hello if you see us online. There are many ways to connect and access information throughout the conference. We definitely recommend that you download the Namely program, which is pinned in the lobby chat, and it's also available on the conference website. You can chat with conference staff in the lobby chat. You can follow the conference on social media at hashtag Namely23. Or if you have specific questions, you can always email us at conference at namely.net. As you are preparing for your day of sessions, let me remind you about the features of our conference platform. When you enter the lobby, you can update your speaker or attendee profile to more easily connect with others. You can view the descriptions and speaker information for all sessions. You can create a personalized itinerary, and you can learn more about the programs and resources of our fabulous organizational partners by visiting the expo floor. Last but not least, we will be sharing reminders, trivia questions, and raffle opportunities with awesome Namely swag in the lobby chat. So make sure you join and participate throughout the day. You can also complete session surveys in the upcoming post-conference survey for even more chances to win. Now, without further ado, it is my immense pleasure to introduce Ashley Williams, a Namely board member and founder and CEO of Rizar, who will be sharing her personal connection to this morning's keynote organization. Welcome, Ashley. Thank you. Thank you so much, Donnell. It's such a pleasure to be here with everyone today. I am so excited and honored to be introducing this keynote session with the Skillman Foundation entitled Youth Rising Detroit Youth on Transforming Media Through Content Creation. The Skillman Foundation partners with youth to transform education systems in Detroit. As part of this work, they help young people find and assert their place in the world through media creation. Growing up in the Detroit area, I was well aware of the Skillman Foundation from a very young age. My mom was a public school teacher, and she would talk about the work of the Skillman Foundation, like how they empower youth to have a voice, and how they do everything they can to provide them with the resources that they need to be successful in their education and their dreams. My mom would also tell me how they would donate to Detroit public schools to support the teachers and students with getting what they needed. From a young age, hearing the stories of their work really transformed my view of a nonprofit, nonprofit doing good work in the city. I am proud to say that I am now get the chance to volunteer with the Skillman Foundation, and I am currently on their external relations and partnerships committee. I wanted to be involved because I've seen now as an adult how important it is to have them in our community. 
They are a staple here in Detroit. And I honestly don't know where Detroit public schools or even education would be without the Skillman Foundation. I feel so humbled to be on the team and excited to see the Skillman Foundation connected with media literacy through Namely, another organization and mission that is very important to me. It's amazing to see how these worlds are colliding just like this and here today. Now, I am honored and humbled to introduce you to Alexa Bromio, social change storyteller at the Skillman Foundation. I've known Alexa for some time. When I was, when I was young, I was actually involved in a local organization. Oops, I was young. When I was young, I was I was actually involved in a local organization that Alexa um, that, that was called the Generations of Promise. And years later, Alexa became one of the leaders of the organization. So we've been connected now for some time and both have shared a love of Detroit and the love of helping youth to have a voice. So thank you so much, Alexa, for being here today. It's such a pleasure. Thank you, Ashley. Appreciate it. <laughs> Excited that we're here today and we've come full circle on our on our journey together. Yes, me too. Me too. So excited. So I will let you take it from here. <laughs> All right. Hi, everyone. And thanks for joining. Let me see. I'm going to try to share my screen and everything get set up. Okay. I think I'm good. Um, so hi, everyone. My name is Alexa Borromeo. I use she, her pronouns, and I am the social change storyteller at the Skillman Foundation. As Ashley said, we're a foundation that partners with people to build equitable education systems and amplify youth power, especially where we are based in our strong, loving, and revolutionary city of Detroit, Michigan. And so I'm gonna be moderating today's discussion with our wonderful group of creative young people from Detroit and members of our Skillman President's Youth Council, Katie, Eva, and Freddie, who I will have the pleasure of introducing in a moment. But first, when we think about content creation on social media platforms, from Instagram to TikTok to YouTube to live streaming and more, there's no denying that this generation, Generation Z, are the drivers. Gen Z is currently between 12 to 26 years old, and they're different from any other generation we've had, and they are powerful. They're the most diverse generation to date, where 48% are people of color and one in five identify as LGBTQIA+, and they are intersectional in their identity, identities and in their analysis of issues and the solutions to those issues. They have been shaped by constant online connectivity, the COVID-19 pandemic, school shootings, racial and political strife, and still amongst that, they remain hopeful and activated. And on top of that, they prioritize authenticity and mental health, while also leading the largest protests in American history particularly in response to the murder of George Floyd and continued police brutality against Black people in 2020. They are an inclusive generation and they have economic and social power. They are changing the way that life is lived, business is done, and the world is run. In summary, Gen Z is changing the game. They are creating visions for a better future in real time through the creation of social media content that is highly relatable, accessible, interactive, and that effectively builds community and fuels social movements. Content creation on social media has become a viable career path for Gen Z. Over one third of social media influencers are Gen Z and over 45% of those aspire to turn their popular content creation into a full-fledged business. Through content creation, Gen Z is reaching the world with their creativity, their ideas, and their visions for the future. And they're influencing and shaping the world through the media that they create. And so today we have a panel of incredible young content creators and consumers to dig more into the world of social media content creation and the possibilities it unlocks. So I'll introduce them now. And first we have Katie Robinson Larsosa, who is 15 years old and a high school student, artist, artist and influencer with over a quarter million followers on her Instagram page, at Hershey Kisses and over 30,000 followers on her YouTube page, which she manages with her two sisters. And Katie is also a model and performer dedicated to uplifting the beauty and brilliance of Black girls. 
She has been contracted by Verizon Wireless, Shane for ad campaigns, and was a key model for the Detroit Public Schools Community District commercials and billboards. She is a social justice community and political organizer who is very involved in policy and in her neighborhood. Hey, Katie, welcome. Hi. <laughs> Thank you, Alexa, for that wonderful introduction. Hello, everyone. My name is Katie, and I am a content creator. I make family-based content with my sisters, and we are called the Hershey Kisses. Not can be confused with Hershey's Kisses. Our name is spelled a little different. It's H-E-R-S-H-E-K-I-S-S-I-S. -S -S -S. The unique spelling holds a deeper meaning as it was inspired by our melanin collection, one of the many traits celebrated by our mother. We started because my older sister was a little social awkward and social media was her way of connecting to people and expressing herself. My mother suggested that me and my younger sister should come on her journey and support her because three is better than one, so we did. We grew our platform on Instagram by posting dances and lip sync videos, sometimes featuring our parents in them too. We got our first million views by posting a TikTok reel called Welcome to Melanin Reels in 2020 on Instagram. And it was up from there. You can find us on Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. We also do performances, act, model, and host. We came out with merch earlier this year, and we recently released our song, Paper, Scissors, Rock, a project that has been in the making for a few years now. We dedicated our time and effort to perfect it before sharing it with the world. Paper, Scissors, Rock means we are getting our money, we're cutting off the haters, and we're rocking away, like getting away from the negativity. I created the cover art, my sister made our lyric video, and we both directed our music video. We are a group of talented young Black girls, and our hope is that we can continue to uplift and bring the beauty and brilliance of Black people, specifically young Black girls. Thanks, Katie. And we'll see some examples of Katie's work in a, in a few minutes. And I'll also share the examples of Eva and Freddie as well. Um, and so next we have Eva Birch, who is 13 years old and a middle school student, artist, dog rescue advocate, and a community liaison for the Neighborhood Art School for Young Artists in the North End of Detroit. She is dedicated to serving other youth and her community, building awareness of issues through advocacy and social media, and leading by example with compassion and tenacity. And then we have Freddie Torres, who is 21 years old and a member of the media team for We Are Culture Creators, a media arts collective and music label based in Detroit. He is a photographer, videographer, musical artist, mentor, and collaborator. Freddie started photography with We Are Culture Creators at age 15 and has since traveled overseas for youth exchange projects and much more. He shares his creative video projects and vlogs of its adventures on his YouTube platform at His Optics. And Freddie is committed to challenging stereotypes through his content and as he navigates the world. And so thank you everyone on our panel for joining. And I have some slides with examples of their work that they're gonna talk us through um, and share how they express themselves through content creation and so the social media space. And so Katie, you're up. So I just realized I was supposed to speak when Alexa was going. I am so sorry. It's but okay. We rolled with it. <laughs> right. Basically, this is just a bit of things I had going on. I talked about me modeling and acting for Verizon Wireless and DPSCD. I have a YouTube channel and Instagram pages there at the top. So go check them out right there. Alexa, you can click. Next slide, please. Thank you. So this is an example of the reels I was talking about. Now I know what's real, what's fake So that video currently holds 2 million views on our Instagram page. We have also posted that on TikTok and our YouTube channels. So yeah, Alexa, you can click next one. So this is a more recent um, TikTok that we have just posted just a few days ago.
you can click. <laughs> and then this is an example of my music video that I just came out with my sisters. Please check it out. Paper, scissors, rock. Paper, we get in that money. Scissors, we We've been working hard like rebels, now we on a different level. We from the D, aka Detroit. Hate to stay, hate and better get to the point. We can't thank our families and supporters enough. You knew it, we knew it, we were the diamonds in the rough. Paper, scissors, rock, rock, paper, scissors, rock, rock, paper, scissors, rock, rock. Paper, scissors, rock. and block, and block. So yeah, thank you for checking out a little snippet of my music video. Now I would like to pass the mic on to Ava Birch. Awesome. Thanks, Katie. <laughs> You're getting lots of love in the chat. And so, all right, Eva, you're up next. Hi, my name is Eva Birch and I use social media in more of like a personal way. I post pictures and you know, videos and content of me like traveling and my personal experiences. Um, I also, I think I bring like diversity to this conversation because I don't have a business page and I don't really use social media in that way. So I think I can give perspective on more of the like consumer side. Um, and the, here are a few of the examples that like, I post on my Instagram page specifically. And yeah, I don't know. <laughs> what are some of the pictures on here, Eva? Um, the first picture is when I went to the Taylor Swift concert. And then I traveled to Arizona last spring. And then I posted a Father's Day post for my dad. And then the last picture was for, um, we went to the Detroit Athletic Club with Skillman for one of our meetings. And I thought that the view was really pretty. So I posted a picture of it. Awesome. Yeah. And so like your the way you use social media, I remember you were telling me was kind of like a diary, right? Like it's something yeah. you share with like is it like public or friends or family or how do you how do you share on social? It's more of like it's a public page. So yeah, it is kind of like a photo diary. I also like it's also a way for me to keep um my family and relatives that like I don't see a lot like up to date on what I'm doing and yeah awesome thank you Eva thank you Alexa and then next we have Freddie come on up <laughs> hey what's up y'all um uh, so my name is Freddie Torres I'm 21 Latino Mexican Puerto Rican from uh southwest Detroit and um I go by his optics on Instagram, which basically means uh, like my perspective, giving people like my like just my eyes and like what I see day to day doing photography and stuff like that. Um, and I have a little saying that goes with my name, his optics. It's a uh, perception is what makes art art. So however you perceive something is what makes it art. Like it doesn't matter how, what angle, which way up, down, left, right. It's all art. However you see it. And uh yeah, I'm, um, these are some of my pieces. So uh, at the top, uh, I recently, or it was last year, 
we were on a youth exchange project and we had went to Germany and six other countries and I had vlogged and recorded like everything. So I'm still working on some videos to post and whatnot, but uh, all my travels and adventures will be on my YouTube page. And I also do like event photography and freelance photography, model photography. So uh, the first two pictures at the bottom, uh, the first one is a concert photo that I took of a bigger Detroit artist called Snapdog. Um, and then the second one is um, of one of my friends. We did like a projector photo shoot type of thing. And um, the third one is a picture of me. We're also uh, working with Kit Kat and whatnot. And I've done my little like photo shoots for Kit Kat and other things like that. Um, but I also model. I act a little bit. And um, yeah, I basically try just to do it all. Um, and... Yes, yeah, so we can go to the next slide. Okay, and this right here, I actually make music too. And um, this song was actually made in like 2020 or 2021, but I just released it in May. So like May 1st or some, somewhere around Sink of the Mile because uh, the picture y'all see right here is actually the Sink of the Mile event I performed at. And this video is kind of like a time capsule like piece. So it, takes uh videos that I was trying to make in like 2017 all the way to 2023 and me actually like doing it um so it's called imagining and it's basically just like a motivational piece for my followers and whatnot but more so just for myself to just remind myself to like get up and go get it and like stop thinking about it and just go do it type of thing so we could go ahead and play that awesome all right this song right here is called Imagining. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, sometimes you gotta get off your ass and stop imagining. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hey, we all love you. We gotta have fun. Hey, y'all got time right now. Yeah. 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 First ever song, first ever music video that's out. Um, I'm gonna answer a quick question. I don't know if this is for everybody, or just me, but um, I I'm mainly on Instagram and um, YouTube is where I try to post like more of like the longer videos and longer projects and whatnot. Um, I'm not really on TikTok or doing too much TikTok things, um, and uh, I'm starting to use Threads as well. But yeah, that was just some quick. I thought that was yeah. So. Yeah, that's me. You have a quick follow up of why not TikTok? Uh, why just because I'm not I'm not on TikTok. I'm on Instagram and always using like reels or like making reels. But I'll like just transfer if I'm if I do make something, I'll just put it on TikTok and Instagram. So just like put it on both. But I do know that TikTok is like more of like a raw platform. So like just do place your camera whatever. But because I edit it on my computer and then upload it to like Instagram, Instagram just like takes it in better than tiktok does mm -hmm. i don't know there's like different different um different styles for instagram versus tiktok it seems yeah. okay cool well thank you everyone for sharing some of your work with us i love how like personal how authentic how empowering all of your work and your platforms are that you're building um and so 
I love all the comments too in the chat, keep them coming. Um, but we'll dive into some discussion and we will have some time for Q&A at the end. Um, and so our beautiful panel, and I'll go ahead and stop sharing so you can see everyone. All right. And so, so y'all, we're talking about social media content creation, and it's such an emerging field that's constantly evolving. So it can kind of be hard to like pin down like what is considered, you know, content creation. And so um, I want to ask you all, maybe starting with Eva and Freddie, what do you consider to be content creation and how is it different from like to the traditional media that we think of? Eva or Freddie, you can go first. Um, um, I would say um, I'd consider content creation. Um, uh, yeah, I'd consider content creation to be like a thing that you could just do yourself and uh, basically just like you don't have to wait on no third parties or anything like that. And um, it's just the process of uh, sharing, um, sharing and producing digital media, such as like videos, photos um, and various things or on various platforms and whatnot. Um, and it's different from traditional media, such as TV, radio and whatnot. Uh, because it allow it allows greater interactivity and participation uh, with like your audience and your following and um, whatnot. I think that content creation is really anything that you put out there on like social media platforms. Um, it's different from like, you know, like Freddie said, like being on TV or something like that, because you're making it's more like more raw, I guess, like TV is like more of like selection and stuff like that but like you can just post what you want on like social media and stuff like that so I say that's what com I mean sorry <laughs> content creation is awesome and we were even talking about like Freddie you were talking about like different levels of quality or fidelity like you can do just like the straight up like selfie video that's like really quick or you can do like really highly edited things like um like your music video and you know things like YouTube are also, you know, social media. Um, but I think one of the really interesting things that you point out is like, there's less barriers to getting your voice out there because like you are the creator, you are the editor, you're the approver or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas like in, in um, like bigger media spaces, like it seems like there's a lot of um, hurdles to overcome just to get your voice out there. Yeah, and then even at that, like, um, content creators have the ability to, uh, like, engage with their audience, like, in real time and uh, respond to comments, feedback, whatever it may be, and uh, basically just build, like, uh, a community base around their content and whatnot, too. So being, like, the, that, like, you have that one-on-one -on -one connection closer to people type thing instead of, like, on TV, you see, like, a show or you see something, you're not going to be able to contact that actor. You know, you'll be able to contact, you'll be able to contact or kind of get in contact with the content creator in a way. I would like to build on to Freddie. I definitely agree with that because I was on TV before with um this one show and it's like very different from what it is on like camera. You know what I mean? So like content creation is like you can really like just really put your ideas out there without it being like edited out or like you know, like being manipulated into something else, you know what I mean? So like you can just be more like yourself and connect, like Freddie was saying, like connect with your fans or whatever, like more freely. And going off of that one more time, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a back and forth all day. Um, but no, uh, it's also like, it's good for people who don't have like, like content creation is good for people who want to start content creation but don't have like too much money uh like or just want to get into like the media aspect in general because um it's more accessible and like affordable than like traditional media things so uh it allows for like a greater diversity and like perspective on like other people's lives especially like minorities to black and brown and you know what i'm saying so it just gets deeper into just like what you could do with content creation right. 
Um, and so I'll go to our next question. Um, and Katie, I'll start with you on this one. And so as content creators based in Detroit, how do you see content creation making a difference in the city and in communities? So I see content creation making a difference in Detroit because content creation puts like a spotlight on Detroit. Creators from Detroit are making videos about businesses, events, places to eat, and overall things to do around the city. This positive light sheds on the brightness of our city instead of what you usually Detroiters are used to seeing like negative things about like our houses not being fixed up. And everything like that and it just makes people want to leave Detroit it's like our city is bad but there's a whole community of people on TikTok on Instagram Facebook and Twitter who are dedicating their whole pages on bringing a light to Detroit and then this makes Detroiters here be like oh my goodness like our city is actually doing something or it just makes us appreciate our city and then people who are not from Detroit are like hmm, they have something going on over there and they want to visit our city which brings more businesses and events back to Detroit um yeah and I'd say um wait what was the question one time yeah, how does how do you see um, content creation making a difference in Detroit and in communities? Um, I'd say uh, content creation can make a difference in Detroit um, and communities by giving like a voice to to those who are like marginalized or like underrepresented too. So um, just by showing what's in the city and like kind of going off of what Katie was saying, like. Um, it's not always just bad here. And like, sometimes uh, Detroit does get a bad rep just off of just content that people are making or like even like news sources and whatnot. Um, and by, um, by sharing stories and perspectives from the city, um, it's a diverse range of uh, individuals, uh, content creators can uh, help break down like stereotypes and promote greater understanding. Um, empathy and um we could also by uh, creating content uh we can help promote like local businesses events uh give platform to local artists and creatives uh by highlighting like the unique culture and history of detroit um content creators can also help uh foster a sense of pride and community among like uh residents here in detroit too so that and um yeah just like helping artists grow um things like that um there's a lot of artists and stuff in the city of detroit so i know that the artists are very in tune and like kind of like a lot of the artists here in detroit are also like they have very strong political views and whatnot so they also share like strong words and things like that on instagram so um yeah and there's also like money coming into the city with like the draft that's going to be here in 2024 next year and whole bunch of other things so the city is going to continue to grow off of content creation and end up making money off of yeah thanks ready eva anything you want to add sorry <laughs> um i think like um katie and freddie like really hit it on the head i guess <laughs> um also, like, I really appreciate Skillman because they use content creation to show people that, like, Detroit youth is doing something great. Like, they have a future and, like, they're doing really good things with their future. And they're, I don't know, I guess they're creating an outlet for Detroit youth to be better. So, thanks, y'all. So, I'm hearing like amplify, like making, like going against like the narrative that's so like put, put out about the city of Detroit and making counter narratives and narratives that are actually coming from direct sources of people living in the city, um, the economic power that comes with content creation and how some of the money coming into the city is able to go to artists, like Freddie was saying, um, through content creation and those platforms and just information sharing too. Um, awesome. And so my next question, and I might try to incorporate 
some of the questions I'm seeing in the chat with this one. So we wanted to talk about what are some of the red and green flags that you look for in content creation and content consumption. Um, and there's some questions in the chat that kind of go with that. So like, do you experience negativity or on social media and how do you deal with it? How do teachers or school support or discourage media? So I think all of those kind of go with like red and green flags. And so, um, Katie, do you want to try to take that one on? Yes. So one of my red flags for content creation is that my content is not reaching where I want it to go because you can put a lot of hard work into your content. You're like, oh my goodness, I put hours and hours into this and I want people to get it. And then they're just like, they're not getting it. They're not consuming it. They're not sharing your stuff. And you're just like, wow, I put all this effort, all this work and it's not going anywhere. And then one of my green flags for content creation is that you can reach so many people. Like there are people watching me from France. There are people watching me from Canada. There are people watching me in Mexico. There are of course people watching me in the USA, but there are so many people that are watching me from all over the world that wouldn't usually be able to do that if we didn't have social media. So my one of my red flags for content consumption is that like you used to go on social media to get away from regular life like because life was tiring you out and you used to just go there have your fantasy land have your fantasy world but now you're here and you're like there's too much content that I'm consuming all at once and now you just want to leave like people are now taking breaks from social media they're burning out and it's just too much for them to consume all at once and one of my green flags for content consumption is that I can learn so many new things from social media. Like those 60 second TikToks can teach you so much stuff, especially during Black History Month. You will learn about one person that you probably didn't, will never hear about in school. But luckily for me, I go to a social justice school. So of course I would probably hear about them, but there are just so many people that you can just find about in a quick 60 seconds. And then you probably might be like, I wanna research them a little more. So yeah. Great. Thanks, Katie. And then I'll, for the sake of time, I'll move us to our last question. And hopefully we have some time for some of the questions in the chat at the end, because um, I think they're really good questions. Um, but my last question is for all three of y'all. And so social media content creation and is, is an industry that's being led by and is reliant on young people. Um, so how are young people shaping, shaping the media world through content creation? And how do you see the influence that your generation will have over the media in the next 10 years? Um, I can start off or somebody else want to? Okay. Um, so uh, I, I see the influence of my generation um, being like very, very impactful as it already is. But um, I feel like right now in social media and like content creation space, it's a lot of everyone everywhere in the space. So like Gen Z boomers to whatever it may be, there's a lot of people just creating stuff. But uh, with Gen Z being from 12 to what was it, 27? 26, yeah. 26. So with that, I feel like by or in 10 years, most of the content creators will be um, Gen Z. Majority of the content creators will be Gen Z. Um, and they'll, they'll have a lot of the, they'll, they'll have a lot more influence than a lot of the people that we look up to today, just because uh, everything that we have gone through and seen, especially like the span of like the, like the time frame of Gen Z, but um, it'll also be good for like the people after Gen Z who like look up to us and um, they'll just see like, I could actually become a content creator, make money off of it. I could actually make this like a job or whatever it may be. So just like inspiring the youth as well after us. Go ahead, Eva. Can I say how like that could also be like harmful too? Sure. So um, I think it's very like 
sometimes it can be very sugar-coated to be like a content creator like full time because um there's like they think that they're gonna make like a bunch of money off of being a content creator but like it there's like a lot of work that's being put into it and sometimes like katie was saying if you don't reach your target audience then you're not gonna make the money that you think you're gonna make from views so some people are like quitting their jobs or stuff like that for content creation and they don't end up you know, like being successful in it only because they're not reaching their target audience. For sure. Um, and then I guess going going back to the, the question of like how and it's not even that like influencers are like a full-time career, just like young people on content or on social media in general, you know, whether you're a full-time content creator or it's something that you do on the side, um, how is this generation having uh, an influence on media moving forward? I would say this generation is having an influence on media by us getting younger and younger and younger. Like, for example, I know there are so many kids that have tablets and use phones nowadays that are just like super younger. Like I didn't get my first phone to like, I'm pretty sure I was nine. And that for somebody, for some people probably may be like, oh my goodness, that is super young. But some other people like me, you getting your first phone at like six or five, that's just crazy to me. Like I can't even really get that and then people are like younger gets they're like being influenced by these other like youtubers and instagrammers like for example a kid probably may watch like mr beast because that's very a very popular youtuber that kids may watch and like oh my goodness i want to make content like him and then they get their phone and then they post their content and they could probably be like five years old, but still getting those views and still posting that content. And as our generation goes forward, there will be so many more kids doing that. And then not everybody has parents that are trying to actually help them. Some people are having parents that are trying to exploit them and using them only for money. Like, thankfully, I have parents who are just being supportive and stuff. They don't even let my younger sister be on her phone all the time. So, yeah. It's pretty good. Thanks, everyone. Uh, there's like so much more we can say, like diving more into Eva's point and Katie's point about like some of the some of the nuances that come with a content creation like career path if we're going that far. And so we could talk about this all day, but I think Ashley's here to dive into some of more of the Q and A. Um, but before I do that, just thank you so much, Katie, Eva, and Freddie. Amazing, amazing. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was so excited of hearing this, especially um, I love content creation myself. And um, just I think it's such a beautiful conversation just to get your perspectives on your, you know, challenges in it, the things that you've learned to, that have inspired you, how you are inspiring others is just incredible. And our audience is really loving it, too. So before we wrap up, I wanted to also ask you a couple of questions. Um, one from the audience is, how do you think your teachers or school have supported or discouraged your media making? Uh, so I'm not currently in high school or in school in general, but when I was in school, um, my one of my teachers, it was my civics teacher, he, um, he knew I took pictures and whatnot, so um, he was like, I could possibly give you some extra credit if you come and take some pictures for the girls soccer team, uh, like whenever they have a game or whatnot. So that was kind of a way that um, like he supported me. But like a lot of the other times in school, there wasn't really too much support uh, until like I got out of school and around like artists and creatives and whatnot. That's, That's awesome. Nice. Thank you. Katie and Eva, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, I can go. I would say... Um... Well, my music video was filmed during school hours, specifically the substitute. Substitute was a family friend, so she was able to help us easily film that little first part of the music video. And 
I had to get some stuff after school because of course you can't really film during the school hours and stuff like that. But my parents you know like the principals and stuff like that. And like they were able to work things out, of course. And of mm-hmm. course they were all for it because they know us and they were just very supportive. So and Eva, did you want to do anything? I'm not sure that I still know that I have social media, but I know that they use social media to um you know like get our school out there and like they ask for like donations for certain stuff and I think that they use social media to help our school and the students in general yes so great awesome and another question I have that just came in from the audience there's so many questions you guys like I don't know if we're gonna be able to we're gonna we're gonna try to do it fast um um, one person who's based in Detroit, actually, thank you so much, Eric, for this question. Do content creators know that they might be able to publish their viewpoints in magazines and get paid for it? Like, do you all know this and have a long lasting permanent example of their creative skills? Obviously, you were talking about how you guys are even making revenue from this. Do you think other creators know this as well? Or are there, is there still more um, information and more, um, yeah, just really more information and more insight that they need to of how to navigate actually making a career out of content creation? Um, there are, there are, um, websites, for example, like YouTube, you can, op- you can get monetized off of YouTube by having like 1000 subscribers. And I think there's probably 4,000 watch hours or they brought it down, but yes. you can easily like make, well, not easily. You have to work really hard and consistently do stuff like that. But now I can make money off of YouTube and then Instagram, they came out with bonuses. So you can make like, one hundred dollars to a thousand dollars from doing that but I saw TikTok and I think they just canceled that and I think that's very dumb because people are quitting their jobs and trying to get monetized off of these different platforms and they can't just take away somebody's income like that when they are giving content for that platform and then TikTok you have to have I think I'm not for sure what the um qualifications are for it or the requirements for it, but you have to have certain amounts to even make some money off of TikTok, but that's like higher amount. But yeah, you can make some money off of social media too. I feel like um, some uh, there's a lot of people that don't know about like ways to make money off of social media uh, or content creation in general, but um, like me currently, I'm not getting paid off of YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, any of those. So uh, I do, I use Instagram as like the platform as like a portfolio type thing. People see my Instagram, they contact me for freelance work and then I make my money that way and then try to connect and build to like hopefully get monetized off YouTube, Instagram, whatever. Um, but with me being a photographer, um, I've thought about publishing some of my work and whatnot into like magazines or even like a big goal for mine is to create my own magazine and like in like the artist scene we, we just call it like a zine instead of a magazine mm-hmm. so I want to make a zine of just like a little photo book of like all the stuff that I've made and um whatnot Eva did you have anything to add related to that as well or um well Katie was like talking about the TikTok requirements and stuff for like getting paid mm-hmm. um you can do like the creator fund I think it's called but um, it brings down your views a lot. Like they basically do that and then they like kind of like shadow ban you. So they take you off of the for you page sometimes. So like you don't reach your target target audience. So you're not really making that much money off of it. So mm. Got it. Thank you for that. And next question is, uh, districts are afraid to have students and staff use social media in schools because of the haters that end up invading social media or media in general. What would you suggest to districts to allow schools to use social media or how to deal with this as an obvious, like what role social media plays in our lives and those of other, of your generation really? That was a long question, I guess I would say. <laughs> so basically I would say, you know, what what would you suggest to school districts so that this, the social media and content creation becomes more of a tool that they are showcasing to students how to become empowered, how to have a voice, how to create career, you know, opportunities compared to only focusing on the negative things that social media has. And even with the negative things, how can they teach students to be more capable of dealing with those negative things? I think, I think- uh, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. 
Okay, well, I was saying, I think they can like create a class. I mean, a lot of people would join the class and you can bring in specific people that are doing things. For example, in DPSCD, there's a lot of people from Detroit. You can hire them, of course, pay them, not necessarily hire them, but pay them to come in and teach a small class about social media. Like me, for example, I'm from Detroit. I could come in for a class and say something or somebody else that's from Detroit, they can come in and say something. And then people that are just using Instagram, there are people like um, Instagram agencies, like influencer people who basically teach classes about that. They can come into and basically teach a class about that because that could also help the high schoolers or middle schoolers with credits and things of that nature and help them get into college more. Right. And it could just be like a fun way to make some credits. Yeah, I was just thinking that as you were saying that too, like with their college applications and everything, how they can market themselves more. Yes. Eva, what were you going to say? Um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, oh, I think I remember. My school has a cyber civics class. So they teach like about social media and the dangers and the wonders of like using social media and like how it reaches people. So it kind of just like, if you're new to social media or your parents are like just allowing you to get it, then um, it teaches you how to like what not to do on social media and how to stay safe on it. So yeah, I, love I think that's how they can incorporate it. And um, if like, obviously if you have like parent consent, they could also include students in social media, like post, I guess, to like share, I mean, give more publicity to their school. So I think because I've seen schools like blow up over that, like mm -hmm. on social media, like posting like a really funny video with their students included in it. So um, to mm -hmm. add to that, I would just say um, it will kind of give like the teacher student like connection. It will kind of like make that more of a thing just because how fast social media is. All the students are probably already off social media outside of school. So if there's like a specific class and uh whatever they could just like kind of connect and be like okay let's do a social media type project or something like that but um to address the haters and the and the negative side of things is just like there's always going to be somebody like hating right so like um how could we especially like a student if I was a teacher how could it would basically be a challenge on the teacher how could I present this social project social media content creation project in a way to get whoever is like hating say like say it's like somebody in the class like um whatever because cyber bullying and things like that but um how could I engage this person more so they're not acting like whatever because they might feel left out they may feel like they're not treated properly or like um equally as the others um so it'd be like more on like the teachers but um I would say just involving all the students to try to just not make anybody feel left out or like alone basically so great. And it's just being mindful of time. Uh, let's go because I just want to just have you guys have a full floor of answering this question. What do you wish adults knew about being a teenager today? Especially even if you're more and more relates to with the social media and content creation specifically, but or in general things too that you would want to share with people just to be aware of. Um, a really big thing for me is um, like mental health so um getting into just like being easy on your kid on your kids and being like kind of understanding and like uh fluctuate with them they might have their days they might not and um I know it's hard and I know we've all gone through some type of mental battle but um it's also just like your kid is still growing your kid is still young so like don't always try to like just give them like the negative side of like oh you're gonna get a whooping or you're gonna get this or that uh, try like giving them just like a talk sit down once in a while with your kid and just figure out what's really going on um because the way I grew up it wasn't really like as connected or as family oriented and um I feel like when I do have kids like the way that I'm going to be with them is just like very like positive affirming and um just make sure that they know like they're great at all times to get what they want and whatnot oh I just hurt you 
Everybody's mm-hmm. hurting me right now. Do you? I hurt all of you guys. So that was so hard. Um, Katie or Eva, would you like to add to that? Yeah, I was going to talk about mental health too. I really appreciate it, Freddie's point about affirming your kids. And I just want to give a huge thank you to my parents for being there for me all the time because I just wouldn't be where I am right now if they weren't. And I can just, I know I can always go to talk to them like that. And to Freddie's point about me having my kids. I know when I get older, when I have my kids, I'll be having talks with them, having sitting down with them, just speaking with them. And then if I get to that point where I'm just like, it's too much for me, I can point them to my grand, to my parents and they can be like, go talk to your grandparents or something. Because I already know that they're going to be there for them the same way that they were there for me. And what about you, Eva? That would so sweet to you. Um, yeah, I think mental health is like a big part of like teenagers like life because, you know, a lot of parents think that we're just kind of like moody, but I mean, yes and no, I think it's a lot deeper than that. Like Freddie and Katie were saying, um, you know, it's just like presenting as like, oh, you're being like mean right now or like you're being (laughs) rude or something like that, but you're actually like really hurt and you just need your space and you just need like, you know. Um, and I think, like Freddie was saying, like being more affirmative, I guess, being more like comforting or like just, you know, understanding that sometimes teenagers just need their space and they're not, I don't know, I guess they're not always trying to be like moody. It's like, I don't know, I, I guess it's like deeper than just what it's presenting as. I totally get that. I, I relate to that being, I remember being a teenager in that way too. And just, cause I feel like you're like kind of figuring out your path, you know, in life yeah. and a lot going on. Yes. I love that. <laughs> Go through a lot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I also want to oh. say that um, social media. Oh, were you speaking Ashley? Oh no, go ahead. I was going to say, yeah. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. I was going to say that social media also plays a role in our mood. I would say, because like I was saying before, consuming so many people's content, seeing so many people's lives, and then seeing people with a lot of stuff like flexing and everything like that, you're like, oh my goodness, I need to get there. And then you're just like sitting here looking around at what you have, and you're just like, this is not enough for me. And it just makes you feel very unappreciative and just not like appreciating the moment that you're in now and not looking back on everything that you have and you're only looking at like what these people have going on so it just has to take a break and everything but it's not very good when your parents are like saying like it's only because of your phone that you're feeling this way and everything like that so it's just that's that's also kind of crazy because in a bit it's kind of it kind of is like your phone like when you look at Instagram, you see somebody posting like a Rolex or their brand new Lamborghini or just like designer clothes. And you're like, dang, I wish I could wear that or whatever. So like the instant gratification and things that come with that is just like, it, it could break you down in a way too. And um, mm-hmm. if, if you go on Instagram and see like people uh, that are sad all the time, it'll make you sad. If you see people that are whatever, it might just motivate you or like things like that. So using uh, social media to like also get out of that phase and like, get into like a motivational bag or like to be motivated and you know to hop out that little phase mm-hmm. yeah oh my gosh you guys are so wise to be awesome. so young. it's amazing I'm just <laughs> I am so excited for the, the future what I'm so excited to see all that you all do I mean I'm just like yes oh, my heart is just so full so I just I'm so appreciative to all of you for being here today with this great conversation you inspired so many of us and like just your insights are just so so needed and so wonderful. So thank you all for all that you do for pushing forward throughout the challenges, throughout all the things that might be going on or, you know, and motivating yourselves and being motivating for other people. Just keep going because whatever it is that you all are looking to do, I am sure that you're going to do it very much. Thank so with you. that, yeah, absolutely. I'm so excited to see what you do. So with that, I will hand it over to Donnell and thank you all so much. It's been an honor yes. for to moderate and somewhat and humble to do it. And thanks Alexa too for moderating such a great presentation. Yes, thank you all. A parent of three, I will definitely uh, be having my teens and young adults watching this because, uh, you know, as they say, the kids are right. And I think uh, I'm constantly blown away in our keynote by 
um, how poised and what a vision that youth have for the future of media. It's all very exciting. But with that said, we have a few uh, items of housekeeping to take care of before we wrap up and head into our day of keynotes. Um, so first of all, of course, on behalf of Namely, I wanted to take a moment to thank our sponsors for their support of media literacy education. We've been making a concerted effort at Namely to ensure that our conference is accessible and affordable uh, to make sure that it's uh, equitable for participation for all who want to participate. And so the support of our sponsors helps make this a reality for our community. In addition, as you head into your day, please remember our community standards. Um, please stay actively engaged. Please hear presenters through their own engage in honest and respectful dialogue, accept discomfort as an element of growth. Think about the perspectives of marginalized voices who may not be present. And of course, and please invite new voices to join. Um, if you're lurking in the lobby, please don't hesitate to go through and actually enter the sessions and um, participate in them directly. And also check your mute buttons while you're in there. Make sure that we are not hearing anything that you don't to hear while you're in your sessions. Also engage in the chat. There's a chat function in every session and uh, use it respectfully but freely. And do remember that not all speakers are monitoring that chat box. So feel free to engage with other attendees. And then last but not least, enjoy. Um, please just have a great time learning and participating in the conference. If you have not already joined us, please hop over to our community hub. Uh, this is Namely's new platform that we launched this spring. It is our response to our members' requests for a space to meet, collaborate, and share expertise that is not on one of the existing um, corporate-owned social media platforms. So please don't be shy about joining those conversations. And with that said, please go forth and enjoy the rest of your day. We will see you all back here for a closing keynote at 6 p.m. and hope you enjoy your breakout sessions. Thank you all so much.